if you want to accomplish anything, you need to know at all times, what is your North Star goal? What is the most important thing that you are working towards right now? Um, I think six months is probably like the minimum time timeline to think about. I think for most people, one year is the sweet spot. And then ultimately like a five-year goal is probably ideal um, simply because of what can be accomplished in those time periods. So almost anything, well, let me, let me just dive in here. So um, what is the single most important outcome you want to achieve in the next six months, one year, five years? Um, this goal should feel daunting, but attainable. That's going to look different for different people. So there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people that are going to be watching this who you drastically underestimate what you can accomplish and you probably need to push yourself out of your comfort zone with your goal. And there's a lot of people that probably kind of have a wildly inflated idea of what you can accomplish in you know six months, a year, whatever. Um, and yeah, like I think what it comes down to is, are you someone who feels very unconfident about what you can do? You probably want to push yourself a bit. Are you someone who is kind of a dreamer and always thinking about these grandiose ideas, but has realistically never really done anything? Um, you know, how many people have the self-awareness to be able to differentiate between those? I don't know, but I will say none of this is going to matter. Nothing I'm going to tell you here is going to matter at all. If you don't have any self-awareness awareness or the capacity to outsource your self-awareness from other, you know, the people around you who know you better than you know yourself. Um, so I'm just going to assume you have a way to distinguish between these two things. Um, so yeah, we, we want to aim for something that like feels like hard, challenging. Um, but also like, I bet I could pull that off. Like if I really work towards that, I bet I could pull it off. And the other key thing is this needs to have a meaningful effect on your life. There's no point in working towards a goal that's not going to meaningfully improve your life. And, and this is why I recommend the minimum of six months. Um, I think six months is a, a, enough of a timeline for anyone to meaningfully improve your life. Now, five years is I, the reason I think a five-year goal is ideal is because you can completely change every single facet of your life in five years. Um, you, you know, you can build a business that gives you the exact income you want. Um, you can, you know, uh, find a ideal relationship or maybe not ideal. I don't know if ideal relationships exist, but you could find like, you know, you could build a relationship that changes your life. You could, uh, achieve, you know, the fitness, your lifetime fitness goals in five. Like there's, there's almost nothing that you can't accomplish in five years. Um, so, and I, I think, I think aiming for longer than five years is kind of a fool's errand just because life, life never moves forward in the way we expect it to. Um, so I, I just think six months to five years is a sweet spot for picking your goal. But the key here is we just need a goal. It doesn't matter what the timeline is. We need to be able to answer the question at any given time. This is my North star goal. If we want to make any sort of meaningful change in our life, any sort of improvement. So what's the single most important outcome that you want to achieve in the next six months? Um, you know, it could be, I want to double my income or I want to, um, we're going to kind of focus on like we'll just focus on income for this just because it's the most relevant to the people who follow, you know, my content. Um, uh, but there's lots of different goals you could have here. You know, there's, there's more than, there's many different versions of this that you can have. Um, income is real simple. We're going to use it for, to illustrate this example, but this could be anything. So the next step, just as critical as identifying your goal is to identify the number one input that contributes to that North star goal. Now, what I mean by an input here, this is what I call actions that are entirely within your control. Um, so most outcomes or goals, things that you want to change about your life have components to them that are a bit outside your control. So obviously, you know, if we want to say my goal is to make 10 K per month from freelance writing, that goal requires a lot of things beyond your control. You know, it requires enough people to say yes to paying to paying you that you hit, you know, that you make 10 K. Um, but with any outcome that is beyond your control, there is an input that is entirely within your control that directly leads to that outcome. So for example, if you are wanting to sell services, the input that directly leads to how much money you make from services is how many pitches you send. So your personal metric for success would be to send out the number of pitches that is going to result in 10 K per month. So the goal that you personally aim towards is I'm going to send X number of pitches. And what you use to evaluate whether that was enough is, am I making this income? So that's kind of the way you want to think about it. And to kind of illustrate this, 
like the, the reason this is so important is that it puts the ball in your court. There's two mentalities that you can have here. Mentality one is I ask you, are you making your goal of 10K per month? You say no. I ask you why. You say, well, nobody's hiring me or the market's rough or this, that, or the other. It's someone else's fault. Mentality two, are you making your goal of 10K per month? No. Why? I haven't sent enough pitches yet. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. And, and in real life, like if you want to, if you want to transition from someone who is upset at your circumstances to someone who accomplishes goals and gets where you want to go, you have to have this mentality. It's not that none of this is relevant. It's not that there aren't external like things that are hurting your ability to hit your goal. There are, and it, and they're irrelevant. Like they, they're, they're there, but if we want to go get that goal, we have to ignore them. We have to focus solely on what can I do to change this? Um, and I know that's a common, I know that's a common thing. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a self-help person. It's just, I'm just trying to be realistic with you because most people focus on this and don't ever achieve anything. Um, if you want to achieve something, like it's not that none of this is real. It's just, it's just very simply, if you want to do something, you have to take the view of what's the thing that's entirely in my control that's going to get me there. Only one of these mentalities is going to motivate you to send more pitches and as a result, it's going to motivate you to do the thing that will increase your income. So these two things decide the goal and then identify the thing that's going to get you to your goal. That is 100% within your control. You do these two things. Like you're in a great position. You, you already have a, a, a mentality that's going to lead to whatever your version of success is. Again, I'm not defining this goal for you. If, if money does not, is not your goal, fuck money. You know, like whatever your goal is, that's what we're aiming for, but the same rules apply. So then step three, we're going to break this six month goal into six monthly goals. So we need to break this down into more manageable quantities. Um, so we want to create loose milestones to aim for, for each month. I'm using our 10 K example here. Let's, let's say you're currently at 2 K per month. Um, month one, we could aim for 3 K month two, 4 K 5 K 6 K month five. We bump that up to 8 K and then month six, we're at 10 K. Now you'll notice this isn't perfectly linear. Um, and the reason for that is what we're going to be doing is establishing a habit in month one that we're aiming to be a consistent habit over the six month period. And any habit that we put in is going to have typically some sort of a, um, there's going to be momentum to it. So the things that we do in month one are going to contribute to our results in each subsequent month. So when we get to month five, we don't just have the things that we're doing in month five. We have all this, you know, we have what we did in month one and two and three and four, all contributing towards our forward momentum. Um, and so we, we want to try to set attainable goals early. Now, not, I don't want to be so hyper attainable. Like, you know, if you're making 2k, don't aim for 2,100 or something, because like, that's, you know, we're going to, we should have a little momentum from month one, just by virtue of setting up a habit. That's, that's new. That is something we're, we're doing that we weren't doing before. Um, but we want our goals to be relatively attainable early and account for some additional momentum towards the end of that six month period. Um, but again, these are loose milestones. The milestones we're aiming for are not super important. Um, we want to, we want to take them seriously, but like you'll see later, this is really what we care about. Um, so the, the types of, you know, the types of input habits that we're going to set are going to accelerate, you know, like we said, okay. So step four, now we set our monthly input targets. Um, we want to establish an input habit in month one that is going to get us to our North star outcome in six months or, you know, one year, whatever, the, whatever your timeline is. So continuing with this example, how many pitches do we need to send out um, each month to hit our 10K per month six months from now? So let's say we decide that that is 200 pitches per month. Again, this is going to this is gonna be a guess. We are not going to know for sure. Um, we want to we give it our best guess. If you want to consult with someone who has hit 10K per month and ask them, hey, how many pitches do you think I need to send to get where you are? Um, you know, you can. Um, if you can't, if you can't hear back from someone on that, don't wait on that though. Like start yourself because ultimately... Anything that someone's going to tell you is also going to be a guess. You don't really know until you do that first month. So, uh, so we're going to send, so we have our monthly target. We're going to send 200 pitches in month one and, and then analyze the results. Did we hit our outcome target of three K? If we didn't, then we want to up our pitches to 250 or 300 the next month. So this is the, the, that first, you know, that first target is a guess. What do we think we need to do? And then we kind of compare notes against our loose milestone to decide whether we need to dial things up. Um, or make adjustments or continue forward. So if we do, let's say you, you know, let's say you're at 2k, you put in 200 pitches in month one and you hit 3k. You can either continue at 200 pitches the next month, 
Um, or if you're feeling really motivated by that additional, you know, money that you made, you can always accelerate things. You can always dial it up anyway, you know, assuming that you feel that's sustainable. We don't want to dial things up so much that it becomes something we can't sustain for the next six months. Um, so, so just keep that in mind. Um, now, kind of an advanced note here is you want to break your monthly targets into weekly and even daily targets if possible. Um, it's very hard to lose focus when you can like wake up each day and know exactly what your metric is for that day. So for example, in this, we have what, um, 200 pitches per month is 50 pitches per week or 10 pitches per day if you're working a five day work week. So the moment you sit down either first thing in the morning, or if you have a full-time job, the moment you, you know, have your allocated hours for building your side hustle, like the first thing you are doing with that time is sending those 10 pitches. You are not writing content. You are not getting on social media. You are not working on your website or your branding. You are sending those pitches, period. That is step one. Um, after you send those two pitches, you can stop. You can do nothing else the rest of the day. You hit your target. Um, or you, you know, if you have additional time after the fact, you can either do more pitches or you can work on other aspects of the business, like your website or your content or whatever you want to do. Um, but you, you first and foremost, get that target in. Um, and make, again, making it a daily thing, like knowing exactly, this is exactly what I have to accomplish today. Very motivating, so much better. You'll be so much more productive than just having a vague, I need to build this business and make money. Um, okay. Step five, we are going to analyze and optimize at the end of each month. So I kind of touched on this a little bit here, but let's get a little deeper into this. Cause this is, this is what really trips people. I well, this first thing is what really trips people up. Did we meet our input target? 90% of people fail, fail here. Um, it's the reason that I do not really do one-to-one -one mentorship anymore because a lot of my one-to-one -one mentorship that I've done, done in the past has basically turned into weekly or monthly therapy, listening to people justify all the reasons that they couldn't hit the targets that they set for themselves. Um, you know, as a coach and as someone who thinks like a coach, I set very reasonable targets with people. Like I don't let people set hyper aggressive targets, especially early. Um, and I'll just tell you, like most people cannot even follow through on very basic, very attainable targets. Um, that's not to criticize. It's just human nature. We are not wired for consistency. And like, I, this is, this is the great filter. Okay. When it comes to be people building businesses, especially when we talk about pitches, cause it usually is pitches because most people want income and pitches is what leads to income and people don't want to pitch. They make up all the reasons to not pitch. But this applies to other things too. Like I, I, I lost 50 pounds in two years, two to three years. Um, I got super overweight in my mid twenties, um, due to a combination of, uh, medical circumstances and just not really prioritizing my health. Um, and losing 50 pounds is literally just waking up each day and hitting a very manageable daily target. The problem isn't doing it on any given day. It's doing it every day for like two years. That's, that's the fucking hard part is doing something consistently. It's the same thing. Again, whatever the target is, whatever the goal is, just hitting the targets you set for yourself gets you 50% of the way there. And here's the key too. Like at some point you, you probably will fail at hitting your inputs, maybe even in month one. And so you have to have, this is where we get back to self-awareness. You have to have the self-awareness to evaluate why. And whether this is something you can fix and set yourself up for success or whether you need to change your goals. And this is something like I'll, I'll tell you from, um, this one was very relevant to me with losing the weight, um, is I get crazy sweet cravings and I do not have the willpower to avoid them. So I tried like, cause I grew up in an environment where I was taught to just try to willpower everything. Um, and so I tried that and I got no results. And then I found, Hey, if I don't buy any sweets and there's nothing in the house, no matter how much I'm craving things and wanting to go get them, it takes a lot more work to get in the car and go buy stuff, knowing the whole way you're, you're betraying your goal than it does to just go to the cabinet and pull something out. Um, and so that's what I had to do. I had to just literally not have sweets in the house. I had to have my, uh, you know, my wife at the time, I, she had to hide stuff. Like if she wanted a sweet, I had to have her like hide it somewhere that was like a specific place for her only that she'd go to get it. Cause if it was in the shared cabinet, I would eat it like period. Um, you have to be like, that's, this requires some self-awareness because you have to be realistic of like, am I not hitting this pitch target because something came up that I can prevent against the next month? Did I not hit this because something that I can adjust my environment to facilitate and hit it the next month? Or am, am I just not going to do this? 
because it's better to recognize you're not gonna do something and go find a goal and an input that you can do to achieve some other goal. Because sometimes, you know, like if you're not willing to do what it takes to get this goal, there may be other things that you can go do. And it's better to put your time and effort and energy um, and mental focus into that than just deluding yourself for years that you're gonna do something you're never gonna do. And honestly, that's what I see so common in the freelance writing space. I see people, I have worked with people you know, for all the people I've worked with who have gotten incredible numbers, the ones I tell you about, I've worked with a lot of people who have spent years telling themselves they're going to hit like 20 pitches in a week. We're talking about a five hour maximum commitment here and have not done it once in years, telling themselves the whole time that there's always a reason. There's always a valid reason that they just, they're going to do it next time. Um, don't be that person. Don't be that person. Be, be realistic with yourself. Um, either do it or don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how else to say that. Um, but moving on, if you did, if you did meet your target, you succeeded. Okay, if you hit the target that you set for yourself, you nailed it, period. What we adjust to from there is just data. Like we're, so if, if you hit it, you've succeeded. Um, now the next question is, did we hit our milestone? So we hit our input target, we got our 200 pitches in. Did it bump us up to 3K this month? If it did, great. We kind of talked about that already. You can either continue accelerate if you want or continue as you did before. If you didn't, that's totally fine. You won simply by hitting your input target. And I cannot emphasize enough that hitting your inputs is way more important than hitting your outcome milestones. The outcome milestones are a loose guess. The inputs that we need to hit the outcomes are a guess. So as long as we're consistently following through with the target we set for ourselves, we have the that's that's the prerequisite to then make the adjustments that we need to get the outcomes we want. So we have a few options here if we put the input in but didn't get the outcome we wanted. First, we can dial up our inputs. Again, be self-aware and realistic here. If in the last month, you know, say say you hit your 200 pitches and you just had another 2K month, your in income didn't go up at all. How how sustainable was those 200 pitches? Did you, did you knock those out and like once you broke it into a daily goal, it was no problem? You feel like you could do even more? Great, dial it up. That's real, it's real simple. If, if we have the capacity to dial things up, it's very simple to do so. It's a... Um, you know, it doesn't require anything other than just a little extra work. Um, so that's great. Alternatively though, did you already, like if you already, if 200 pitches was already an aggressive target for you or whatever you set, I mean, I don't think 200 is really that aggressive for anyone, but let's say it was like, you know, like let's say for you, you exhausted yourself hitting that target. Do not dial it up, okay? Like if you're already like exhausted from what you did that month, we do not wanna try to dial it up the next month. We wanna look for al alternatives. So the second thing we can do, evaluate the method that you used for your inputs. So if you're pitching, how did you pitch? How many people responded? How many responses led to sales conversations? How many people purchased? Is there a bottleneck somewhere here that we can make an adjustment? So for example, you know, if you sent 200 pitches and only five people responded, the pitch is the problem. Like we, we want a lot more responses than that. Um, so the question there is like, do we change the method? Like, were you, were you cold emailing? Maybe we switched to like LinkedIn DMs or something. Um, or, you know, is, say we were sending LinkedIn DMs and we were getting that response. Maybe we switched to cold email or do we change the pitch? Like is the, is the, the, the message you're sending people just kind of a turnoff? Um, that could be the case, like something, or it could be, say you're getting like half of everyone you reach out to responds to you. Um, and then when you try to like transition that to a sales call, you're getting like, you know, two sales calls out of fifth, out of a hundred responses. That's the clear bottleneck there. So at that point, like we want, well, you know, the messaging that we have going on between the response and the sales call, that's where we need to fix things. Now, this is something where you often aren't going to have the expertise to be able to identify where the bottleneck is. So if dialing it up doesn't feel like an option and then looking at the data, you don't really feel like you have a clear understanding of what needs to be changed. This is where you consult people who have accomplished this goal already. Like this is where, and like, okay, this is where coaching and consulting is optimal because you now have a real scenario with real data that someone can look at and give you their expert insight on the specific metrics and bottlenecks and data that you're working with. You will get 10X results from having an expert help you here than having them help you at the very beginning when you have only vague goals and ideas. No, like you haven't done anything. You very likely aren't gonna do anything. Like this is, this is the type of stuff that experts love to help you with. And they will help you with this probably for free. Like if you message me with a question like this, you're like, if you ever message me saying, I sent 200 pitches last month, I got X number of responses, here's the pitch. Like, what do I change? I will be so fucking excited 
to help you figure that out because that is an interesting scenario based on real effort. And I know that what I tell you to do, you're actually gonna do. I spend 75 to 90% of my time answering the same five basic beginner questions from people who are very likely to never invest a single modicum of effort into what they're doing. Like when you show up with your question based on all this effort and attention that you're putting in, like it's so exciting for people like myself to help with this. Like whether you're talking to me or you go reach out to other people, now there, there are people who, who don't give a shit. There are people who, unless you pay them, they don't, they don't care. Um, I, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying for me and a lot of people I know, um, particularly experts who don't do coaching, like, you know, people who are really good at shit and aren't actively building like, you know, coaching businesses. Um, you go reach out to them and give them a scenario like this. They're going to be pumped to help you with that. Um, this is where we want to get like, and like, guys, if you get here, you are ahead of 99% of people. If you get to the point where you're like, Hey, I'm putting in the work and it's not getting me the outcomes I want. When I built my course business to, when I was, I was in my first year of building it, I was aiming, I did this whole process. I was aiming for 10 K per month in course sales. Um, and I, my model was to put out a bunch of like my input was putting out content, was putting out, uh, SEO content, ranking it in search, getting people who just found my free content. So helpful. They wanted to sign up for my email list knowing that, you know, probably a reasonable percentage of them would, would want to get my paid course too. I was mostly doing this because my email subs over the previous few years had been asking for a course focused on client acquisition. Um, and so I got to, you know, I, I was putting in the work, I was hitting the inputs. I got to, to month like six or seven and I was at like 4k a month. And so like, I was, I was doing okay, but I'd like been hanging out, I think from like month six, like month five through, through eight, I'd been kind of hanging out at like three to 4k per month. Um, my, I was publishing new content, but it wasn't bringing in like, like my number of subscribers per month wasn't going up. And so I reached out to someone I knew who had had a lot of content marketing success. And I asked them, Hey, like, you know, like, can I, can I like pay you to hop on a consulting call with me and, and let me know, like, give me some advice. And they're like, yeah, sure. So we, we hopped on a call. They looked at my content and they said, Hey, you need to add, you need to add email sign up at the beginning of your post. Like at that point, I only had stuff at the end and like, you want to have it like right in either the opening section or the second section, pretty early to the top, you want to add in a, a signup option. So I went through all my content, added that. And within like a week, my email signups had doubled. I was getting double the email signups with let, which led to with over, over a few months led to doubling the income. Um, and that, that kind of bumped me back up towards hitting my milestones. And I ended up hitting, I ended up hitting my, my first 10 K month in the 12th month. Um, but the key there is like, I, I did all the work leading up to that. And then I, then as, when I wasn't hitting the milestones while continuing to put in the inputs, I reached out to someone who knew what they were doing. I was like, Hey, help, like help me optimize this. And they did. So if you, like, if you can just get to this point where you are following through on your input targets and then evaluating the outputs, you, like you're literally ahead of 99% of people. So anyway, hope this was helpful. I hope this changes someone's life because if you list, if you really like, if you really do this, if you follow through on this. This is the difference between hitting goals and thinking about goals is, is this right here, probably the most useful 30 minutes I can give anyone. So, um, yeah.